Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this pre-application webinar for the Ethical, Legal, and Social Implications Congress, which we refer to as the LC Congress. My name is Nicole Lockhart. I am one of four program officers within NHGRI's LC Research Program, and I will be leading the webinar today on behalf of the LC team. I'm actually going to go ahead and shut off my camera to help preserve the bandwidth um, for the presentation, and hopefully that will make sure that my audio works better today. First, some logistical notes. This webinar is being recorded. The slides will be available for download on the webinar event page. The recording, responses to questions, and a resource list will be posted on the event page within about two weeks. In the Zoom, the chat feature has been disabled for participants, but we will use it to post helpful links and other information throughout the webinar. All links shared in the chat will be included in the final resource list. You could feel free to ask questions or share comments in the Q&A feature at any time. We will respond to quick questions in the Q&A and address remaining questions after the formal presentation. If we do not have time to get to all questions live, we will be sure a response is included in the final Q&A list. Next slide, please. The formal presentation today will review key aspects of the Notice of Funding Opportunity, or NOFO, for the LC Congress. I will not review everything that appears in the Funding Opportunity. Before you get started on an application, you should read the entire funding opportunity and feel free to contact us with any questions you might have about the requirements, expectations, terms, or other details. Next slide. In section seven of the funding opportunity, you will find contact information for NHGRI staff you can reach out to with questions about program requirements, Grants, man grants management and peer review, as shown on the slide. Deanna Ingersoll was not able to join us today, but our division of the our director of the Division of Extramural Operations, Jen Troyer, is here and will be able to help answer financial or grants management related questions. Rudy Pizzotti is also here with us today to answer any questions related to peer review. My colleagues, Dave Kaufman, Renee Sterling, and Sheetal Joes are my fellow LC program directors, and they will be posting information into the chat or the Q&A feature throughout the webinar. Next slide. This is just an outline of the topics that I'm going to cover during today's webinar. We will begin with background information on the LC Research Program and the LC Congress. Next slide. The term LC is often used in different ways. The acronym stands for Ethical, Legal, and Social Implications. Very broadly, LC can be thought of as a lens, framework, or perspective that is used to assess, examine, or evaluate the field of genetics and genomics. LC also refers to the research program established at the NIH in 1990 as part of the U.S. Human Genome Project. The LC Research Program is part of the National Human Genome Research Institute, or NHGRI. Next slide. Since its founding in 1990, the NHGRI LC Research Program has supported empirical, analytical, and conceptual research to anticipate and address the ethical, legal, and social implications of genetics and genomics. This broad focus has created a large, diverse, multidisciplinary community of researchers. As a result, there's no single society or conference that encompasses the field of LC research. To address this need, the NHGRI has periodically supported a conference to bring the full LC researcher community together, known as the LC Congress, or LCCon for short. Since, two th since 2001, Six LC Congress meetings have been supported by NHGRI. The most recent LC Congress meetings were supported by a U13 grant award and held virtually in 2020 and 2022 due to the COVID-19 pandemic and as a hybrid meeting in New York City in June of 2024. Next slide. Goals of the LC Congress and of this funding opportunity include 
to provide the multidisciplinary LC research community with a dedicated conference to come together and share research findings, to encourage collaboration across the LC research community with a particular focus on trainees and early career scholars, and to provide a highly accessible format to ensure participation from a broad range of groups interested in LC research. Next slide. Before I get into the detailed information about the funding opportunity, I'd like to describe some of the key features of the LC Congress to make sure everyone is on the same page. This funding opportunity will support three LC Congress meetings to be held biennially in 2026, 2028, and 2030. The LC Congress is anticipated to be a multi-day research conference, typically attended by 300 to 400 LC researchers across career stages. The program comprises a mix of invited plenary lectures, submitted individual presentations, panel sessions, and poster sessions, but may involve other innovative components as well. These will be hybrid meetings with in-person and virtual components to maximize participation and allow attendance by individuals who may be unable to attend in person due to limited travel funds, disabilities, medical concerns, family obligations, or other circumstances. The awardee will work in consultation with the NHGRI LC Research Program staff to form an organizing committee with representation from across the LC Research community. Next slide. Next, I will talk a bit about the funding mechanism being used for the LC Congress and eligibility requirements. Next slide. This funding opportunity uses the U13 conference mechanism. Please note, NIH conference grants have several key differences from research or resource grants. Please read the entire funding opportunity carefully. There are several application requirements that are specific to conference grants that you may not have seen previously, even if you are familiar with the NIH application process. Next slide. LC Congress will utilize a U13 activity code, which is a cooperative agreement for conferences. Under a cooperative agreement award, NIH expects to have substantial involvement in the proposed project. The focus of NIH's involvement is to support or stimulate activities and work jointly with recipients as partners. Our goal is not to direct or assume primary responsibility for an awarded project. Section six of the funding opportunity lists the specific roles and responsibilities of investigators and NHGRI staff, which comes into play post-award. Next slide. In terms of eligibility for this funding opportunity, any domestic organization located within the United States of America or U.S. territories may apply. While foreign, component, while foreign organizations are not allowed to apply, foreign components to applications are allowed, and all organization types are allowed. Next slide. Next, I will cover key components that should be included in your grant application. First, it is an NIH requirement that all conference applicants receive permission from an NIH institute prior to submitting their application. Accordingly, you must contact NHGRI no later than October 8th to obtain a permission to submit letter. Please email me, Nicole, I listed my email there, to obtain this letter. If I am out of the office for some reason, my automated reply will state who to contact in my absence. This letter must be included with the application as a cover letter. Applications that do not include a permission to submit letter will be withdrawn and will not undergo peer review or be considered for funding. Because this funding opportunity only has one receipt date, if your application is withdrawn, you will not have the opportunity to apply for several years. Next slide. The conference plan section is the main body of your application where you will detail your plans for the conference. 
Note that while this section of the application is typically called the research plan or research strategy for research grants, this section will be called conference plan in the system generated table of contents. You will have a total of six pages for the conference plan section. The conference plan includes four key components outlined in the funding opportunity. Conference overview, conference planning and organization, family care, and planning for future meetings. I will now describe each of these sections in turn. Next slide. Okay. The first section of the conference plan should provide an overview of the conference. In this section, you should describe the following key aspects. The objectives, anticipated session formats, and logistical arrangements for the conference, the plans for dedicated sessions for trainees and early career scholars that support networking and career development, the process for invitation, submission, review, and selection of abstracts as part of the conference programming process, and the process for review of travel award applications from trainees, researchers from resource-limited institutions, and or researchers from low and middle income countries. Next slide. In the conference planning and organization section, you should describe the organizing committee, including its role in conference planning, the expertise that will be represented, and how members will be selected. In addition, you should describe how early career scholars and individuals from disability communities will be included. Your grant application does not need to name specific individuals, as that will make recruiting peer reviewers more challenging. Describe plans for publicizing the conference to all interested attendees and resources to help attendees navigate the conference, such as a conference website and or an app. Describe how broad attendance will be facilitated using in-person and virtual content to maximize participation, including plans to allow virtual attendees to actively participate in most conference sessions. Finally, applicants should describe how they will proactively design a conference that enables participation by individuals with differing abilities or who may require various accommodations or features in order to fully take part in the conference. Applicants should describe planned approaches and strategies to maximize the accessibility of the LC Congress for people with disabilities, including both in-person and virtual attendees. Next slide. Attendance for some individuals will be dependent on the availability of resources for family care. In the third section of the conference plan, you should describe plans to identify resources for child care and other types of family care at or in close proximity to the conference site to allow individuals with family care responsibilities to attend. The information should allow attendees to arrange for family care as needed. Next slide. Final section within the conference plan. Applicants should note that this funding opportunity allows applicants for three conferences to be held biannually in 2026, 2028, and 2030. Applications requesting multiple years of support must provide the following additional information for, fee for each future year requested in as much detail as possible. Conference topics, tentative dates, locations, and attendees, plans for future conferences dependent upon the outcome of the first year's conference or developments in the field, and plans to assess and evaluate each conference to ensure iterative improvement in future years. I will now describe additional required components for this funding opportunity. NIH requires all applicants for conference awards to include a one-page diversity plan in the other attachments section. The PDF formatted document must be named diversityplan.pdf with no spaces or quotation marks. The diversity plan must specifically describe plans to enhance diversity by broadening the participation of individuals from uh, diverse backgrounds, including those from underrepresented groups, such as underrepresented racial and ethnic groups, individuals with disabilities, individuals from disadvantaged backgrounds, and women, and the selection of and or makeup of the organizing committee, speakers, invited attendees, and audience. Please note that applications that do not include a diversity plan 
will not be accepted for review and will be withdrawn. Next slide. Applicants must also include a one-page dissemination plan in the other attachment section. The PDF formatted document must be named disseminationplan.pdf with no spaces or quotation marks. The dissemination plan should include a robust plan for how the research presented at the Congress will be preserved and disseminated. Dissemination approaches could include posting of conference content on publicly accessible platforms, including abstracts, posters, recordings, and resources, development of a special issue in a relevant journal, or other approaches. NHGRI encourages investigators to consider disseminating research findings and products via publicly accessible platforms, such as the Center for LC Resources and Analysis. Next slide. Now for some good news. There are a few plans that are actually not required for this funding opportunity. Since this is a conference mechanism, both resource sharing plans and data management and sharing plans are considered not applicable. You do not need to include a resource sharing plan or a data management and sharing plan in your application. Now I will discuss some details related to award information and budget, and we only have a few more slides left. NHGRI intends to have intends to fund one award. Application budgets are limited to 350,000 direct costs in a year in which a Congress is held. Applications for up to five years in duration will be accepted to support LC Congress meetings in 2026, 2028, and 2030. As with all NIH conference grants, facilities and administrative costs, also known as indirect costs, are not allowed. Applicants should provide a narrative justification for each proposed personnel position, including the role of the individual in the conference and the proposed level of effort. Applicants should pay, pay careful attention to allowable and non-allowable costs outlined under R&R budget in section four of the funding opportunity. To promote accessibility and maximize attendance of a variety of individuals interested in LC research, registration costs for attendees should not exceed $500 per meeting for in-person attendees and $100 per meeting for virtual attendees. Applicants should consider establishing reduced registration fees for trainees, researchers from resource-limited institutions, researchers from low and middle-income countries, and or other attendees who may have limited travel funds available. Next, I will briefly go over peer review. NHGRI will convene an expert panel specifically for review of the LC Congress applications, which will likely occur around March of 2025. Section five of the funding opportunity lists the review criteria that will be used to evaluate your application. Because this is a conference mechanism, the review criteria are different than for a research or resource grant. Section five includes criteria that are both general to conference grants, as well as additional criteria that are specific to the LC Congress funding opportunity. Applicants should be sure to read both the standard and specific review criteria and provide enough detail to allow reviewers to assess each criterion. Impact scores will be released soon after the review, and a written summary statement of the review will be available no later than 10 days, I mean not 10, 30 days after the meeting. I will be available to discuss summary statements with applicants once they are released. Finally, I will go over a few reminders resources, and then we'll move to Q&A. This is a list of those key things that you need to remember if you plan to apply for this funding opportunity. First, contact me, Nicole Lockhart, no later than October 8th to obtain a permission to submit letter. Again, that letter is required for your application. Include a diversity plan, which is one page in length. Include a dissemination page plan, again, one page in length. Be sure to read the entire funding opportunity. 
and set up a call with me to discuss and get feedback on your specific aims. This will also allow you to get general feedback and ask any remaining questions. While this call is optional, it is highly recommended. The application due date is November 19th, 2024. Finally, listed here are some resources you may find useful. And the first column are helpful resources related specifically to conference grants. The second column has some more general resources that may be useful, particularly if you are new to the NIH grant application process. There are a lot of steps and details in the application process, and it is helpful to review resources like these very early on. You want to be sure to submit an application that will be easy for reviewers to follow and assess. You also want an application that can, can be correctly submitted through the required systems. Starting early is key for timely submission. Now we are going to move into the Q&A portion of our webinar. And Dr. Dave Kaufman will be joining me to help um, moderate the Q&A. And Renee, I think you can go ahead and stop sharing your slides. Hey there, Nicole, can you hear me okay? Yep. Well, that presentation was so clear that we have one question in the Q&A from Christy. Um, and it's about the, the budget schedule, which is a little odd. And Chrissy asks, um, so there's only $350,000 that you get during the year in which the conference is held. The planning, however, is going to need to begin the year before. How is this addressed? Okay, so that's a great question. And it is a little bit tricky for these conferences. So keep in mind that um, these applications will be reviewed around March of 2025. They will go to May Council in 2025, and the award will be made sometime that summer. So depending on when the conference is held, if let's say the conference was held in June of 2026, you would have the time from when the award is made up until that conference. You would have a budget for that period, and that's when you could do all of that conference planning. Um, one other thing that is a little tricky is the funding is every other year, right? Because we cannot... Per NIH rules, we cannot provide funding if the conference is not being held in that award period. So for years in which a conference is not being held, you can either enter zero, and if the system does not allow you to do that, just enter $1. Um, and if you have any other budget-related questions, um, you can put them in an email to me, and I can always reach out to our Chief Grants Management Officer, um, Deanna Ingersoll, and get more, more feedback. Nicole, we don't have any more open questions, so I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to say, but reach out. Um, I think the the key points are really that that list of key reminders that I put at the end. Um, if you do not follow the specific rules for conference grants, your grant will not be reviewed. It will not be reviewed. It will not be considered. So you need to make sure you include that permission to submit letter. Um, which you have to contact me to get, include that as a, conf as a um, cover letter, include the diversity plan, and then all the other instructions. Um, and because conference grants are really specific, that's why we're emphasizing you need to read the notice of funding opportunity to make sure you don't miss anything. If you have any other questions, kind of as you move through, you can feel free to reach out to me by email, um, email is much better than phone. There's days I telework, you won't be able to get me at my desk. So just email me, we can set up a time to talk. And also that allows me to, um, if I need to get additional guidance from a colleague, I can forward your email. So just please feel free to um, reach out to me. We are very excited about having uh, the LC Congress continue. And so we really do want to make sure that, that people apply to this funding opportunity. Nicola, there is another question that um, came up, and I might ask for a little bit of clarification. Um, the question is, any problems or issues with the diversity plan? Um, whoever asked that, do, can you maybe say a little more about what you're, what you're wondering? Sorry that we're forcing you to type rather than speaking. So the notice of fine, I'll just... I tap dance install a little bit uh, from state institution with higher restrictions on diversity statements. 
Okay. Um, so I, okay, that's fine. Um, we, we appreciate that states certainly do have um, differences in um, their requirements and restrictions. Um, if this is a concern for you, one, still definitely include that diversity plan or your grant will not be reviewed. Two, um, the notice of funding opportunity does lay out what you need to include in that plan. Um, and so I think you could probably just stick pretty closely to what's being asked for. Um, but I see Jen Troyer has her hand up. Jen, would you like to add on? Yeah, I just would want to say that I know there have been um, questions about diversity and inclusion language recently. And I just want to make sure that it's very clear that this is not about making any decisions on funding based on any specific category um, or diversity at all. It's just about making the conference as applicable to as many people and accessible to as many people as possible. And that is what that diversity statement is talking about. Yes, that's an excellent point. Jen, it's not speaking to who can apply. It's not speaking even to only certain people can come to the conference. It's describing how you are going to uh, make the conference very open and inclusive across a number of different kinds of categories. Um, and so uh, if this individual feels more comfortable speaking in a one-on-one -on -one session, I'd also be happy to follow up with you uh, in a just one-on-one -on -one call um, but do you kind of read through that section of the NOFO, of the Notice of Funding Opportunity, and see if, if that helps a little bit. But definitely do include something. It's only one page, so I don't want, I wouldn't want that to be um, a barrier to your application. And thank you for raising that question. We will have these slides posted. Um, I believe they are already up, I think. Um, they are, they're already online at the um, event page for this webinar. Uh, and then within one to two weeks, we will also have this recording posted. If there you have any colleagues that you would like to share it with, if maybe you have collaborators that were unable to join today. And we will also, I guess, generate a very short question list from these two questions. We might kind of generalize them or, or make them a little uh, less specific. Um, and we will have those available as well. Uh, so if you have any other questions, type them in quickly. Otherwise, uh, please do make sure to reach out to me if you plan on applying so that you can get the permission to submit letter. And I'd be happy to have um, phone calls with anyone who plans to apply to address additional questions and kind of talk generally through your specific aims and your plans for the conference itself. Okay, I'm not seeing, oh, seen as I, Oops. Okay, permission to submit letter. Um, this can just be very general. Uh, we are asking for applications in this space. This requirement comes from uh, some of the standing conference um, funding opportunities where you need to make sure that a NIH Institute is committed to supporting your conference before you apply. Here we are asking for people to apply. This is a request for applications type of um, funding opportunity. So I think if you just have, um, you know, who's going to be PI, uh, what organization, and maybe just a brief description. I think it can just be, you know, a paragraph or less. Um, that's really all. And then I will send you back something which you can include within your application. So it's not something um, that is very arduous. You just need to make sure that it gets done so that I can provide you the letter you need in your, in your um, as a cover letter.
I think that's it, Nicole. Okay, I think that's it. Please feel free to reach out to me um, if you plan on applying. And uh, I look forward to hearing from um, some of you soon. Thank you so much for joining today.